Good morning, Reignited Prayer. We have some slow internet connection, but we're going to get it started on this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. There's a little bit of slow internet connection, but we are going to get started this morning. Hey, Tashana, I just got done listening to the reveal, girl, reveal, reveal, reveal. <laughs> Yes, yes. Good morning, Shawana. Good morning, Tess. Good morning. Good morning, Tess. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to the Monday morning call. Good morning, good morning. God, have your way on this morning. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Reignited Prayer Call. I am so excited this morning. I already got a good word from my sister this morning, and we're going to continue just walking in that, allowing God to have his way on this morning. I'm going to give it another minute because I got on just a little bit late this morning, but God is still worthy. He is still good. It looks like this uh, Facebook is going a little slow this morning. I don't know what's going on with the connection, but it's all good. It's all God. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Yes, thank you, God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Whatever's not pleasing, God. Good morning, Pamela. Good morning, Soraya. Good morning, Julie. Good morning, Zelma. Good morning, good morning. Those that are on the prayer line, on the call, good morning to you as well. Good morning. Whatever's in you, God, that's not pleasing to you, remove it, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The movie God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, all right. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. We are starting a few minutes late on this morning, but I thank God for another chance, another chance that he has woken us up this morning and started us on our way. We have our health, our strength. We are in our right minds. And I thank God for each and every one of you. Good morning, Zarese. And so this morning, um, I tell you, it's been a, a struggle the last couple of days. I don't know what's been going on with this technology, but we're going to get it straight on this morning. And so yesterday, um, the Lord, over the last like six months, he, um, you know, put it on my heart that we need, I need to be doing our, my podcast. And so my mentoring group, we all have our different assignments. And so one of the assignments that, um, that some of us had was to, to do a podcast. And so the last six months I have totally just put it off, put it off. And so, um, 
I, I, I even, I mean, I got it together. I got my, my little cover for my podcast, little picture. Um, I even, God had even given me already what to talk about on my first podcast. Um, so I had all that written out, my scripture. So I had everything ready. I just had not recorded the podcast and submitted it to the different platforms for it to be on. And so, you know, um, last night I, I got a chance to, um, you know, I said, well, let me go ahead and just record my podcast. You know, you know how you put things off and you procrastinate and put things off, put things off. And so, um, I, I started doing my podcast last night and as soon as I logged on to GarageBand, which is how we record it, I start looking at it and I'm like, what is all of this? And so I immediately got a little frustrated last night and um, I said, dang, I said, well, let me, let me text my mentor and see if she's available so she can kind of help me walk through this thing. And so I text her and I waited for about three or four minutes and um, she never texted me back. And I said, dang, well, you know what? I'm finna just, I'm finna do this another time. I ain't even finna do this right now. <laughs> You know how you get a little frustrated and you like, you know, forget it. I'm just, I could be watching power right now. I miss power. I need to be watching power right now. So I'm going to forget this podcast and watch power. <laughs> and so immediately, immediately I got convicted and the Lord was like, uh-uh, you finna sit your behind right there in that chair and you're going to figure this thing out. He said, you're going to figure this thing out because I have given you, I have equipped you with exactly what you need to finish this assignment that I have given you. Mm, my God, my God. And so I started to think, you know, I, I, you know, I'm like, well, God, should I could be taking me a nap because I'm tired. I could be doing this. I need to go clean the kitchen. I could be doing that at the immediate immediate sign of frustration and how many of you know you have an assignment know you have something to do but you keep procrastinating you keep putting it off and then when you finally start to do the assignment or when you finally start working on the assignment you get frustrated and because of your frustration you immediately start thinking about other things that you can do or you, you say you know what forget it i'm gonna put this off i'll do it another time mm, my god that was just like, I think about the story of Jonah, and this ain't even in my notes, but I think about Jonah and how the Lord said that he needed to go to Nineveh. He had to go to Nineveh and preach the gospel and do what he had to do in Nineveh. And he said, mm -mm, I ain't going to Nineveh. I ain't going to Nineveh. And so he went the other way. And because he went the other way and got on the ship and got, he got thrown off of the ship because he, 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 he was causing issues on the ship and, and a, a big whale swallowed him up. So, so Jonah allowed what was in his mind to distract him. He allowed, you know, the, the thoughts in his head that he wasn't good enough, that he wasn't equipped. He didn't know what to do. He allowed those things to get him off course from where he was supposed to be going. And that's what we do this morning. But baby, I came to tell you on today, you already got what it takes. You already got what it takes. And so we're going to be coming from Hebrews 13 and 21 this morning. And the scripture reads, yeah, frustration distracts. Absolutely. The scripture reads, uh, now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And so this morning, I just want to talk to you guys just for a few moments about the equipping that has already been placed inside of you. And so we all have an assignment. I don't care who you are on this call. I don't care you know, what skills you have, what talents you have, whatever, we all have an assignment. And God has already equipped us for the assignment. So whether you think you, you have it or not, whether you think you can do it or not, whether you think you have purpose or not, you do. You have purpose and God has already equipped you with everything you need to fulfill that calling, that purpose, that promise. And so um, 
in Moses, in the in 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 the book, um, I think it's um, Lord Jesus, Exodus. I want to say Exodus. It says Moses doesn't respond with a lot of enthusiasm. Instead, he questions God's call on his life, and so sometimes we feel insecure. Um, when God calls us to do something, we feel like we're lacking or we don't have what it takes. And so when God called Moses to deliver the people, Moses was like, mm -mm. he was like, I can't even speak right. He's like, I don't even know how to talk. <laughs> and I think I talked about this before. Moses, his, his, he said his speech wasn't eloquent enough. He didn't know what to say and how to say it. And so he probably, maybe he stuttered or maybe, you know, he just, he, did, he didn't know how to use words correctly, but he immediately got insecure and said, no, Lord, you ain't tell me to do this because I can't do this for you. I'm not adequate. I'm not good enough. I'm not eloquent enough. I'm not fancy enough to do this. I can't do this for you. And so um, he said, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, who am I? Who are you? God has called you. He told you. He called you by name. And he has already confirmed who you are in him. And when he told you what he wanted you to do, he already knew that you was going to be able to handle the task. So don't allow your insecurities to keep you away from doing the will of God. And so God patiently responds that he will be with Moses, giving him the power and the grace to deliver the people. God is going to be with you in whatever the the task is he has called you to do. And so when Moses doubts his ability as a public speaker, what did God do? God sent Aaron to him to speak for him on his behalf. My God, see, God will send people on your behalf to speak for you, to do what you need to have be done. Even when you feel inadequate, God will send you the resources that you need to get the job done. He even allowed Moses the ability to perform miracles, to conquer the Israelites, their unbelief. Remember, as you remember, he, um, to, um, God told uh, uh, Moses to throw the staff down, the staff that he was carrying. He said to put the staff down. And when he put the staff down, the staff turned into a, a serpent and he was able to pick it up and it turned back into a staff. And so God will do these things right in front of people. He will equip you right in front of the same people that you are afraid to be in front of. And so even with Esther, you guys remember Esther? Y'all remember how Esther had to go in front of the king and, and she, she needed to save her people, but God equipped her with exactly what she needed. He equipped her with beauty. He equipped her with what to say. He equipped her on how to fast and what to do in order for her to be able to even approach the king and request whatever she wanted from the, queen, the, the, the king. He was captivated by her beauty, my God. And so God equipped her with that. And so a lot of times when God gives us something and he wants us to do something, he wants us to, you know, complete an assignment. He, you know, we tend to think that Lord, because of my past, I can't do this thing. I can't do this. My past is too shaky. My past is, you know, it, it's not right. I have a past. Well, get, let me tell you, since we all have a past, but if I tell y'all some things about my past, you probably would drop your mouth to the ground. That's for another story, another day. But we all have a past. And just because what's in our past doesn't look like what we should be doing in our future doesn't mean we don't have an assignment. And it doesn't mean that we're not going to be effective. My God. So the Samaritan woman, you guys remember the Samaritan woman in John 4 and said that she had five husbands. The Samaritan woman had five husbands and it even said, and the man that you went right now ain't even your husband. And I said, Ooh, wait, my God. And so after speaking with Jesus, she ran to tell the Samaritan people about a man who could tell her about her past. So God had given her assignment and she didn't even know her assignment was to go back to her people and tell her people to, about a man. She said, come see a man who could tell me all about my past. So it didn't.
matter what her past looked like. It didn't matter that she had five husbands and was with somebody else's husband at that point in time. It didn't matter. God still used her to go to the people to bring the people back to him. My God, how many times have God used you to minister to somebody on your job? He used you to minister to somebody in a store. It doesn't matter what your past looked like. God can still use you because he has equipped you with the very thing that he needs to bring the people to him. Mm, Jesus. And so it doesn't matter how many times you've been married, but this time God is going to equip you with what you need to stay in your marriage. You might've been married 10 times before. That's okay. God is going to equip you that on that 11th time, you're going to have a happy, successful, flourishing marriage. I mean, you could have been in school and maybe in elementary, middle school and high school, you might not made the grades. You might've made the D's, the F's or, you know, the C's. You weren't A, B student like some of the kids were, but guess what? God told you to go to college and you're going to go to college and you're going to finish college with flying colors. So don't worry about what the past grades look like. Just worry about what the now grades are going to look like. And so you may even had a speech impairment or you might be fearful of getting up in front of people and speaking in front of people. But just like Moses, God will equip you with exactly what you need to lead a great nation. He may say you need to start a Bible study. You may need to start a ministry. I'm going to give you what to say to these people. So don't worry about it. Don't be fearful. Don't be insecure about what you can't do. I'm going to give you exactly what you need to finish the task that said, hey, my God, you may be been a prostitute. I don't know. You might have been a stripper. I don't know. You may have been sexually abused. You may have been physically abused. You may have been verbally abused, but that's okay. God will make sure that those thoughts, those, those thoughts of verbal abuse don't come up into your head when it's time for you to finish your task, when it's time for you to do what he asked you to do. God will equip you with everything you need. So it's time to go out and start the business. It's time to write the book. He gave you what you need down on the inside to finish your assignment. My God, thank you, Jesus. You will finish your assignment. And so God has put everything you need inside of you. In 1 Kings 17 and 13, Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. And so you guys remember this story about the woman and 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 she was get out picking out picking up sticks because she was saying that her and her son was about to die because they, you know they didn't have anything there was a famine in the land and they were about to die and so Elijah the Lord sent Elijah to her and told her to go and 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 make make him some cake and and so the woman had very little, it says in verse 13, but he said, but first make a small loaf from what you have and bring it to me and then prepare the rest for you and your son. And so all she told him she had was just a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil. That's all I have in my house. I don't have nothing else. Have you been there? Ladies, I've been there before. I've been there where all I had in my cabinets was a pack of noodles for me and my children and maybe a can of vegetables. But how many of you know God can whip that up into a whole good old good meal and you're going to be full off of that pack of noodles and those vegetables? Come on now. I, I've been there before. You know, mama used to say, Sometimes all they had was some beans and maybe a piece of meat, but that fed their family and that those beans, they stretched and it made a meal. And so that's what she was saying is all I have is some flour, a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil. And, and Elijah said, you know what? Just go and make that for me. Just make that for me. And if you be obedient, if you make this little bit for me, oh, I'm going to bless you with so much more. I'm going to bless you. God's going to bless you with so much more and said. God will use whatever you have, no matter how small or little it looks to you. So whatever's on the inside of you, whatever that gift is on the inside of you, God can use that gift and make so much more. He, the, the Bible says that your gift will make room for you. And that's exactly what's happening here. And it says, 
um um so he she went and she made that little bit of flour and she and used that that oil and made that cake to give it to elijah and then it said that she had more than enough she had more than enough her flour being never got empty her oil never got low that she continued pouring out more and having more uh, uh to be able to make for her and her son to live off of until the the rain came and so it, it won't just be used for you but your gift will also be used for others as well when he equips you it's going to be used for other people because she had enough for even her son to eat off of and so the blessings will overflow your blessings will overflow. He said that she will not run out of flour or oil. Her blessings overflowed, my God. And so remember, Elijah helped a poor woman. Her sons were about to be sold into slavery. And so it's the same, same book in the same book in Kings, same thing. The, the woman, her husband died and she and her husband left some debt. He left some debt. And so um, the, the, the people were going to come and they were going to take her sons and sell them into slavery so she can pay off that debt. But here comes Elijah again. Elijah coming to the rescue. How many know we need some Elijahs in our lives? We need somebody in our life to just speak to us. We need somebody in our lives to just stand in the gap for us, okay? And so Elijah asked her, what does she have? And she said, all I have is a small jar of oil. That's all she had was a small jar of oil. But guess what? That's all she needed. That's all she needed. All I have on the inside of me is just a little bit of joy, a little bit of peace, a little bit of long suffering, but that's all you need. All I have on the inside of me is a little bit of knowledge of how to write a little bit. That's all you need to write the book. All I have on the inside of me is a little bit of organizational skills. That's all you need to plan the events. All I have on the inside of me is just a little bit of, 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 of being able to recite poems and a little bit of revelation. Well, guess what? That's all you need to be able to minister to somebody. All you have to have is just a little bit on the inside of you. And God is going to equip that little bit on the inside of you and make you great, my God. And so she was equipped with that little bit of oil. And he told her to go out and borrow as many jars as she can. So she sent her sons out and said, y'all go and knock on these doors and get these jars. Get these jars. I don't know what's going to happen, but the man of God said, go get the jars my god and so they got all these jars they got all these jars and in verse seven she borrowed more jars and she was able to pay her debts and then she even had leftovers so god took that little bit of oil and allowed each of those jars to be filled up and there was an overflow because not only was she able to pay her debt but she was able to have extra to live off of my god so just with that little bit that's on the inside of you mm, god will take that thing he will allow you to accomplish that assignment that he has for you and then he'll allow it to overflow overflow and make room for more make room for more my god so god will allow you to multiply what you have just by your obedience you guys it just takes some obedience that's all it takes is obedience just like yesterday i was supposed to sit down i was supposed to ben had done my podcast but um i was being disobedient and so yesterday it, just in me walking in obedience, God allowed that thing to flow for me to get my podcast done. Even when my mentor wasn't available, he started giving me what to do. He said, start going on YouTube, start searching on Google, start Googling how to do this podcast because you're going to sit down and you're going to do this today. And so just with the little bit of knowledge I have to be able to go on YouTube, just with the little bit of knowledge I had to be able to Google, just with the little bit of knowledge I have to put one and one together I was able to record that thing and not only just record it I was able to upload it to all the different platforms so that other people can hear what the goodness of the Lord is and I was able to get that thing done just by the little bit he put on the inside of me I had to not allow the distractions to keep me away from what my task was on yesterday because I had an assignment that I had to accomplish my God I had an assignment that had to be done just like the 
the woman at the well had an assignment to go back and tell the people so the people can come and hear about Jesus and he can minister to them. We all have an assignment, ladies. You have an assignment. I don't care how little or small you think it may be. We have an assignment. There's people assigned to you and you have to say yes. You have to sit down. You have to be obedient and you have to do what you're supposed to do so the people that's assigned to you can come to salvation and come to the knowledge of the goodness of Jesus, my God. So God told you what to do, sis. God told you to do it. So stop allowing fear to hold you back. Stop allowing your insecurities to hold you back. Stop allowing people to distract you to hold you back. Stop allowing yourself, your own thinking to hold you back. Stop thinking that you don't have enough or you're not enough. You are more than enough. You are more than enough. You are more than a conqueror. The Bible says you are more than a conqueror. So stop allowing the enemy to keep you distracted by all of this and walk in your purpose. Walk in your purpose, sis. He has equipped you. You have everything you need already. It's not, you already got it on the inside of you. So now it's time for you to bring it out. Walk in obedience and walk in your purpose. My God, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That was a word for me on today, you guys. And I know it was a word for you. And I just, I just, I, I, I beg of you to, to pray and ask God, God, you have given me these things on the inside of me. How can I use this for your kingdom? How can I use this for the uplifting? What is my assignment? What is my purpose so that I can be used by you. Thank you, God. Thank you, ladies, for getting on this call on today on the Reignited Prayer Call. I just love you guys. I, I just thank you for sharing this. I thank you for just getting on and just allowing God to use the few, the first fruits of your morning. The first fruits of your morning is so important that you guys are spending the first fruits of your morning with him. He is going to bless you for that sacrifice. He is going to give you more than enough. He is going to give you overflow just for this small sacrifice. And so let's go on to prayer. Mm. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you on today, God. Lord, we just love you on today, God. We admonish you, God, for you're worthy, God. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the creator of everything, God. And we thank you for that, my God, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Lord God, I pray for each and every woman that's on this call, that's on the phone, even the women that are going to come back and do the replay, God. Lord, I just thank you for each and every one of them, oh God. Lord, I thank you for equipping them with everything that they need to fulfill their assignments, oh God. You have given them assignments, God. I don't know what the assignments are, God. It might be to write the book. It might be to start the ministry, start the Bible study, Lord God. It might be uh, 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 to start the children's the children's daycare or whatever it might be on today, Lord God. You have given them assignment, God. Let them know that you have equipped them with everything they needed, just like Moses, just like Noah, just like Nehemiah, just like Esther, Lord Lord, you have equipped them with what they need to finish the assignment, to go about doing their assignment, God. They are more than enough, oh God. Lord, right now I bind the insecurities, Lord God. Lord, right now, um, Jesus, hallelujah. Right now I bind the insecurities. I bind the low self-esteem, oh God, that I'm not good enough, that I can't do it, that, that, that it's not going to work out. I bind the spirit of fear, oh God. You said that we, we, we can't have the spirit of fear, but we have the, the, the spirit of love and a sound mind, Lord God. I bind the things that are coming up in their head that the enemy is trying to plant, that they're not going to make it, that they're not going to be able to do it, oh God, that they're not going to be successful. God, I bind that right now, God, and I claim and I decree and I declare success over their lives right now, oh God, with whatever they put their hands to, everything that they touch, God, right now in the name of Jesus is going to be a success right now, Lord God. Everything that they put their minds to, oh God, is going to, is, is going to prosper, oh God. You're going to allow it to prosper, oh God, not just now oh God, but you're going to allow it to prosper for the next generation and the next generation and the next generation, oh God, so their grandkids will be successful, their great grandkids will be successful, oh God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, oh God, as they go 
go out this week, oh God, and, they, and they're doing their assignments, oh God. Lord, I ask that you just be with them, oh God. Give them a mind to finish, oh God. Give them a mind to just sit down and do what they need to do, oh God. Lord, I ask that you block the distractions that's coming up in their lives, oh God. That's nothing but the enemy trying to come up and distract them and throw them off course from what you have for them, Lord God. And I ask you right now in the name of Jesus to just move their distractions, oh God, where the distractions are people, oh God whether the distractions are their jobs, whether the distractions are their ministries, oh God, whether the distractions are their children, oh God, their husbands, their boyfriends, whatever it may be, oh God. Right now, I ask that you just block the distractions, oh God. Give them a mind to want to just go and finish and do what they're doing, oh God. Give them a mind to focus, oh God. Allow them to focus on the things that's at hand right now in the name of Jesus, God. We love you, God. We praise you, God. We thank you for all these things, God. We thank you for just being the God of 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 equipping, oh God, a God that is able to just make us be more than what we can ever imagine or think, Lord God. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus, and we count it done now, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. And so if this message was for you, if you know that God has called you to something, you know that God has um, um, been wanting you to do a thing and you just scared, you're fearful, you don't know how to start, you don't know what to do. I beseech you to go and fall on your knees and fall on your face and cry out to God on today. Cry out to God. And according to Romans 10 and 9, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So go and cry out to him. Tell him, God, I love you, God. God, I know that you were raised from the dead, God. God, I know that you can do all things, God. I can look to you from what's coming to my help. Just go to him. And I promise you that he will deliver you. He will save you. He will equip you and he will give you exactly what you need because woman of God, you are more than enough. Have a great day. Conference recording, press one. To read this session is no longer being recorded. <laughs>